cardinal rules of networking. Take it away. Clean up, clean up bad. And what can I say that has not been said? So I'll do my best to maybe add some color time. You might want to write that down. So I've got a handout in front of you guys that looks somewhat like this. Eight and a half by 14. It's got some of these on there as well. So some places to take some notes as well as some things I'll expand on when it comes to your networking because it, a lot of what I can say has already been said. So I'm going to add a slightly different twist on some things and maybe suggest you challenge how you currently network a little bit as well. And it really depends on what your objective is when you're networking and how you interpret these. The first one, for example, is something that's been said several times, which is to be visible. You've got to get out and about and get out of your cave and go to events. The challenge is how do you pick the right events? Uh, on an average basis, how many networking events are there in the Richmond area? On a daily basis, how many would you say? Any idea? Lots? Right? Three a day? Okay. On, on average, about 30 a day. Wow. About 30 a day. So if you start to look at and those are actual networking events. I'm not talking about your kid's soccer game, a swim meet. Those are actually networking events as well of a different flavor. But actual networking events, there's no shortage of them. Now, fortunately, thanks to this newfangled technology called the internet, right, that we have available to us, you can do a lot of research. You gotta be careful so you're not stalking people. It's a fine line, love the internet. Because before I go to an event, if it's on Eventbrite, for example, I know who's gonna be there. If it's on Meetup, I know who's gonna be there. So when I have access to a list of attendees, I always love to mine that. In my case, I don't tend to go to events where my customers are. I don't go to events where my customers are. I prefer to go to events where the influencers of my customers are. So I've got to know my bullseye market that I'm shooting for. That is absolutely critical. In my case, I tend to deal with CEOs that have sales forces. So I'm not going to meet with the sales force themselves because guess what? They're selling something to me at the event generally. That's what they're there for. I'm there to meet their boss who ultimately makes their decision. So I would encourage you to be visible at the right event, highly selective, find where influencers of your bullseye market hang out and go there, not necessarily to where the end users themselves are. The second tip is don't spam people. We said it several times, right? You show up and throw up. No one likes that when it happens. So spamming happens in two ways. It's diarrhea of the mouth. When you come in and just, uh, I call them business card ninjas. You see these guys, they come in, <laughs> throwing out cards, that's their goal. I want to pass out 10 business cards and bada bing, bada boom, I'm out of here. That's not how you want to network, but a lot of people do that. So don't be that guy, right? So don't spam people that way. Don't immediately jump in, start selling to me, create a relationship or create an environment where I want to ask you, tell me more. So I want to be educated about what you do. Also, cardinal rule to me, it's don't add people to your daggum email newsletter. It happens all the time. I leave an event and I've got 50 bloody, not invitations, I've been added and I start getting newsletters. Nothing annoys me more than when someone gets into my business without me giving them permission. So please don't do that. It's very different than if you ask, it was really nice meeting you. I send out a weekly newsletter with sales tips. Would it be okay if I add you to that newsletter? Totally different game than when I get home and all of a sudden I'm added. That's gonna cause a lot of negativity, which is not what you want, certainly not your goal. The next one is ask, how can I help you? I know Jim mentioned this along with several others. Great way to wrap up a conversation. Powerful, powerful verb. You always know a great network when that's how they end their conversation. It was really nice to meet you, how can I help you? And the more critical component is to actually seek to look into your network to see how you can now help somebody. That's the game changer. It's one thing to ask, oh, how can I help you out? How would I know a good referral for you? It's very different than to take the time to act on that and also know the answer yourself. It happens all the time. When I end a conversation, it was really nice to meet you. How can I help you? Another, uh, I don't know. If you happen to run into somebody who needs blah, 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 That'd be it. I'd love a referral to that person. That'd be great. So I know that answer. You know, I'm glad you asked. Come to think of it. And I've processed my conversation. You might be connected to this person. That'd be a really great introduction. Or if you know this type of person who I'd love to meet, that would be a great introduction. End of conversation. So seek to help others and act on it. And also seek to have the answer yourself. So when you're asked, you know it's cold. The next one is listen actively as well. Uh, you don't just, uh, I think as the answer, you don't just do network. It's not something you go pass out business cards and hope that referrals and relationships fall out of the ceiling. It's not going to happen. So listen actively. And we teach this to our, our kids when they're young. You know, pay attention in school. So we should be better at this. But so often we're having a conversation, thinking about what we're going to say next, rather than reacting to the conversation. So again, work hard not to be that person. 
that just doesn't process a conversation is always seeking to talk more about themselves. So we say in BNI, for example, you've got two ears, one mouth, use them proportionately. Use them proportionately. Next one is to say thank you often. I love Fred's example. And well, what is the single best thank you tool you can use? What, handwritten note? What, what are some other tools? Bottle of wine. Bottle of wine? I like, I like, I like that thank you. That's very powerful, right? Okay, a referral. The, the best answer that's proven over and over again, scientifically proven, is whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. So say thank you in a way that you can do it consistently as well. Not everyone will send it. If it's a note card, great. If it's an email, great. If it's a text, great. And do your best to understand through your active listening how the other person would prefer to be thanked. So if they happen to like one, and Jim gives me a great referral, a much better thank you than a quick note would be to send over a bottle of wine. Because what's going to happen? Do it again. He's going to do it again. <laughs> the brother likes some wine, so he's going to do it again. That's, you know, I'm a Pavlovian dog, right? I'm trained. I give a referral, I get something nice. That's pretty cool. I like that. Another great gift to give people, we see a lot of coffee drinkers, and this is Coffee Talk. One of the best ones is a $5 Starbucks card. Now, I'm not a paid spokes model for Starbucks, but I can tell you the power of a Starbucks card is a thank you. $5, not much money. In a note card, easy to mail. It does not cost you extra postage. And when you send somebody a Starbucks card, you now interact with them on multiple senses. So I'm going to receive the card and say, that was very thoughtful of Mark. Awesome. They got the card, number one. They're going to go to Starbucks, pull out the card. Who did I get this from? That Mark Deutsch. He's a cool guy. Thank you. Number two. And while they're waiting for their coffee, they're taking in the sights, the sounds, the smell. Then they actually drink the coffee. I'm having multiple impressions. And a $5 gift card is good for you know, at least a fourth of a cup of coffee at Starbucks, right? It gets something. It's good for a couple cup of coffee, generally, at least two. So I get multiple impressions from a $5 gift card. Very easy to do very cost effective and also very, very powerful. The next one is the focus on people. If you've ever heard of the uh, six degrees of separation, right there, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, I think you've heard the game. There's a, a flaw associated with that. It was actually based on a great, a great study in the 60s and 70s called the Smaller Community Study. And what they found in that study was very simple. Take an envelope from Toledo, Ohio, was one of the spots, address to a guy in New York without an address and get it there. And how many degrees of separation did it take to get there? And what they discovered was it took an average of six degrees. The challenge is only 29% of the people in the study completed the test. The rest failed. So you want to be a 29%. And the 29% of people, especially in Richmond, what is the average degrees of separation in Richmond? One. Right, it's like one. I calculated 1.2, 1. right? Someone knows someone, they're married to someone, went to school with somebody, they're related to them, who knows? It's a big, small town. So always be careful who you're talking with. And fully process what the degrees of separation are in town. So as my dad taught me when I started in business 20 years ago, was always treat everybody with respect, whether it's the CEO or the janitor, treat them with respect because you truly never know who knows who. And it's just smart human nature to do that as well. And I think as Jim mentioned, set up one-to-ones. Set up one-to-ones. That should be, networking should be as easy as I meet a group of people and my goal is to set up follow-up meetings one-to-one -one with those people. So I meet a number of people, I don't know, find a handful of people I can then sit down the next week and have a cup of coffee with and do a one-to-one. -one. Simple as that. Because when you do those one-to-ones, that's really get into depth and really get to know people and determine, is this somebody I want to add to my close personal network, is what I'm thinking. So meet people and then sit down and do one-to-one -one meetings and all your time really should spend not bouncing around from event to an event. Those 30 a day, don't just run to event to event, you'll go nuts. You have to follow up and follow through effectively. So I focus my energy on one networking event per week of quality with the influencers of my bullseye market, and then I'm setting up follow-up meetings with those folks to build my network deep as opposed to just wide. The next one is to work your network. As Jim mentioned it, return on relationships. Return on relationships. Have some system, have a tool, as Angela mentioned. Have something you can actually use to build your network because it's not going to build itself. Relationships are tough. That's why half of all marriages end in divorce, right? As Fred said, this is all about dating. And so you have to continue to build that relationship. I add to that a tool such as a database, a CRM system, contact relationship, customer relationship management system. The one that I use and recommend is called Insightly, insightly.com. It's a free database. It's fantastic to use. I don't need something as fancy schmancy as an act, for example. That's great if I need all the bells and whistles, but have a system that helps tell you how to stay in touch with people. And also use Facebook, use LinkedIn, use those technological tools as a way to stay in touch with people as well. The next one has been said several times as well. Very powerful. Give to gain. Give to gain. At BNI, we have a very simple philosophy. It's called giver's gain. 
I seek to help others and in exchange I'll get something that I need, but that's a hope and not an expectation. So give without the necessary reciprocity, and it also applies this law of reciprocity. If you help others, they will want to seek to help you whether they like it or not. It's just good human nature. People will say, wow, that was really nice. They're not going to purposely necessarily say, I have to help Mark because he helped me. You're going to want to because I did a favor, help you in some way with your life or with your business. And finally, by far, by far the most important, if you do nothing else, you can be dumb as a stump, frankly, and be terrible at networking and never go out of the house. If you are great at follow through and consistently and with a sense of urgency, urgency is currency, follow up fast. So if you are really, really good at following through in your commitments, you will build a powerful network and be far ahead of 90% of your peers out there who do a bad job at follow through. Hopefully I've given you at least at least one tip that helped. Mm -hmm. Anybody? All right. Cool. Here's my job.